conference uh, to support my fellow community members, but more importantly just to network, have converse, difficult conversations, learn about new and innovative ways of how we can be uh, better advocates. As a racialized person, I feel I felt like I'm a part of a mobilization campaign for all my life. I was born into it. And you know, when my mother said, you gotta work twice as hard, I'm realizing that there's issues, right? That this is my, this is my fight, and this is my struggle. Right, so, so now that I can be amongst like-minded people who also want to take up this fight and I'm, you know, as a public servant, I have an opportunity to, to affect the lives of others in a big way, a, a whole province. I'm happy to take up this sword and my shield and go to work. sisters and brothers. The black worker has always been the canary in the coal mine. Our suffering tends to signal a greater societal pain. When we lose freedoms, the bar is set to our standard. When we are forced to work for pennies or as slave labor, that is the benchmark all workers are held to. So look, sisters and brothers that don't look like me, you have a reason to fight for my rights. You got a reason to fight for me to have a place at the table. Because where I go, you on your way. Do it for the love, hater, the fame, but still trying to make a change while I make some change. Swimming in the belly of the beast, where by 21 you have a locked up or deceased. Used to hang by the school. I think it's necessary that I do see people of color, people that are racialized in any form, at the boardroom table. Because if you don't see someone there that looks like you, chances are you're not going to take your first step to get there. So this is about dismantling systemic anti-black racism. It's about dismantling anti-indigenous racism and all other forms of racism, which also means it's a hands-on project that we are not just asking, we are saying you will, if you are an OPSOSEFPO member, you will be engaged in this process. We will make that room and we will also expect you to participate in helping to undo the harms and wrongs of the past so that we can build a better future together. The only way that all of our members will feel that they can trust us to represent them in bargaining or in grievance meetings or in the broader political realm is if they feel that they can get involved and have meaningful input and take on leadership roles and get their, union, their issues addressed by their union. I became the a local president of 510 and I was nervous and afraid but now that I'm in the role so many doors and opportunities have opened up to me and right now I'm proud to say I'm actually the third racialized woman of Caribbean descent to take this role and I hope to inspire this trend to continue. The key for me is uh, going to as much conference and webinars that I can and making that, um, that connection. Um, and um, take the risk um, because that's what's going to help build your resilience. Um, there is oftentimes higher risk for some than others, but the risk will be well worth it. This is what mobilization looks like. It's actually actioning and not just creating a policy or creating a procedure and then telling those to follow up and follow through but bringing it to life, making it part of the lived experience, challenging minds, shaping paradigms and belief systems. Because that is how you build mobilization. It's from the ground up. You build those people, then you stay, then you move them up the ladder, and that is what it is. Mobilization is the heartbeat, heartbeat of absolute.